For my language and literature internal assessment, I have chosen as global issue the dichotomy on the archetype of women as an underlying role. The literary work that I have chosen is Madame Bovary by Gustave Lubert. And my non-literary work is Connie Francis, her discography, her work, her participation in various movies, and what not. Um, the global issue I will be focusing is on the dichotomy, the contrast of the archetype of women as an underlying role, contrasted in both of the works of Gustave Flaubert and Connie Francis as well. Mambori by mm. Gustave Flaubert uh, is a classic representative of the realism literature in the 19th century. By the other hand, uh, Connie Francis is an American singer. She's a former actress, a top charting female vocalist of the late 50s and early 60s. And her discography, her songs, has been within the songs of the century as well as she has been one of the most influential singers of the decade of the 50s and the 60s. The global issue is uh, the disparity of the archetype of women as an underlying role between the works of Gustave Flaubert, Madame Bovary and various songs, various works of Connie Francis. In Madame Bovary, um, the portrayal of herself is regarded as serviceable and supplementary for a man as an object. Uh, it can be seen that she has the idealistic principles of the Cinderella complex. And this concept is very well illustrated in the chapter 8, part 1. I quote them, she came to the window to see him off, and I stayed lean on the sill between two pots of uranium, clung in her dressing gown and laid loose about her. This is a clearly, um, this is a clearly way to illustrate that um, Mambori idealizes herself as being a princess, and she's looking for um, her, her, her knight, her prince that in this case um, will be her husband, or Charles. Um, by the other hand, we have this other quote in the same chapter 8, part 1, where I quote, The music of the ball was still murmuring in her ears, and she tried to keep herself awake in order to prolong the illusion that this luxurious life that she will soon have to give up. Mm. This is a um, really um, concept illustrated that um, Mambori is um, Mambori is, is trying to idealize to fantasize herself in a in a real world because uh, her reality is harsh and she's using it as a coping mechanism, uh, but also as well because she has this idealization of uh, the role of the women that she has seen in her books in the literature that she read. Um, in Madame Bari, uh, the, the character of Madame Bari can also be seen um, romanticizing, uh, romanticizing of the female underlying role and can be seen by Madame Bari by her books. She has a really um, a strong affection to her books, to to her uh, literature fantasy that she thinks that she can she can live in the real world, and by that by that uh, it has consequences like um, the parasynthetic relationship she has with the other man in the in the literary work, um, but the um, the books of Madame Bovary um, are supporting her as well as she uh, getting in a non-stopping cycle of idealizing and fantasizing herself 
as one of these characters that has a um, beautiful life with a beautiful world uh, that has a beautiful man that loves her and supports her but all of this is Manbury idealizing herself as one of the characters of the book she's, she's doing this as a coping mechanism and I quote um, from part one of the chapter nine uh, here it says uh, pick it up a book and then dreaming between the lines she longed to travel or to go back to convent she wished at the same time to die and live in Paris Madame Boiry uh, alludes to the subjacent idealization role of women in the stereotypical gender roles um, this can be seen as she as well as well as trying to live this fantasy she take this um, gender role, this is a typical gender role that um, women have to be serviceable and supplementary to to the man but, but again this is only a fantasy she is not seeing the harsh reality of the world because she don't want to live in it so she is she's, um, using the books, using the, the world, the literature world as a coping mechanism for her to not uh, live in this reality. I quote, uh, she taught herself in love, but since the happiness failed to come, Emma tried to find out what men in life by the world, bliss, passion, and ecstasy that had seemed to her beautiful in her books. Um, again, we can see the idealization of this, of this fantasy world that Madame Bory that Emma is living at um, in the chapter 8 part 1 where I quote she let herself glide the poor virgin ascending to heaven and the voice of the eternal discoursing down the valleys um, for Madame Bory we can see that um, she's living a fantasy she's uh, living in a similar thing to a solid sipsim uh, to a, a self-centered, to a egocentrical reality where she only wants and see what she wants to see and she also lives what she wants to live and at the end she that um, that makes my worry to get to her independent doom and uh, that is uh, a consequence of the things that my worry have done in her life um, by the other hand uh, in Connie Francis Connie Francis has been a very important idol not only in music and discography uh, she has been very important as um, as part of the very important characters of the second wave of feminism and as you may know uh, this happened in the 50s and 60s uh, Connie France lived in the in the age of the Cold War, in the in the age of the Second Wave feminism. Uh, she had to live for a very hard reality, living with an abusive parent, living with um, living within the Italian mafia. Um, but uh, hearing the lyrics of the song. There is still a few good love songs left in me. She, uh, we can see that she addresses empowerment and arises after difficulty, after she um, disunfortunately uh, being raped. She was raped. Um, also, uh, the Italian mafia killed her brother, and after that, she was diagnosed with maniac depression. Uh, but again, by the by the lyrics of the song that we can see in there is still a few good love songs songs left in me. Uh, and she provides the mean to show that the fantastic and surrealistic idealization is not an adequate as a coping mechanism in the sinister, in the fatality, in the bad things that happen. As Bowery did, um, Connie didn't. Funny didn't uh, use the fantastic and surrealistic idealization that Mambori did to cope with these problems. Mm. 
Uh, also, Connie Francis uh, co-starred a movie uh, by, in the 60th century, in the early 60th century, uh, that is called in the um, in the 60s. That is called Where the Boys Are. This film was directed by Henry Levin, and um, well, uh, co-starred by Connie Francis, among other characters. Uh, where the Boys Are was written by George Wells, uh, but it was based on the uh, 60th novel by the same name that Glendon Stoward wrote. Um, the title of the movie, uh, with the same name of the title of the movie, uh, it was sung by Connie Francis. Uh, she co-starred the movie with a supporting role. Uh, where the boys are is very important for the for my global issue because uh, uh, it's one of the first team films team films uh, to explore to explore sexuality and the changing sexual morals and attitudes uh, según, uh, among American youth. This is very important to get um, the sexual uh, morals. The sexual attitudes, um, changing the paradigm uh, that we have of uh, the sexuality in in the sixties. Um, she was very important for this role. Um, where the boys are is praised for its sacred deception of um, courtship and sexuality. Um, uh, where the boys are, that uh, is co-started by Connor Francis, uh, illustrate um, wisdom that has been obscured by the second wave feminism. Uh, this is quoted by Camila Plechin in 1991. Uh, it shows the the girls uh, trying very uh, different strategies to put down the boys that want to. Um, Get in a sexual relationship with them, uh, we can see the we can see the importance of various work of Connie Francis here, uh, giving um giving uh, uh, exploring a deep dive on the adolescent on the teen sexuality that is very important for the teenagers. Uh, and also changing, also giving advice, also um, changing the path of the of the changing sexual morals and the sexual and courtship and romantic um, attitudes that the uh, American child, American college and teenage child uh, once act. Um, uh, also, um, Connie Francis can see can be seen breaking the romanticism of the female underlying role. Um, Connie Francis in numerous songs um, can be seen breaking this uh, social paradigm of the American culture in the fifties and the sixties. Um, she she's a breakthrougher. She's a uh, inventor of the of the things of the concept of sexuality and empowerment of women in the time of the second wave feminism and the time of Cold War. Uh, to conclude, uh, we can see that both of these are represented um, in a total polarity and contrast as Connie Francis and Madame Borei both undergoes by difficulty, but uh, Connie Francis transforms and empowers adverse to Madame Borei, where she idealizes and even when she is present in difficulty or intractability, Madame Borei is so still self-centered in an uh, idealization that dooms her into her own tragedy. Um, as a whole, we can see the discrepancy of both uh, representation, representations in both of the works and uh, how both are in a total polarity and dichotomy 
in the prime of the role of women in this social cultural context.